Hi, everybody, and welcome to What on Earth Am I Here For? I'm Rick Warren, pastor of Saddleback Church and the author of the book, The Purpose Driven Life. Now, we're going to begin this 40-day journey by looking at life's three most important questions. The question of existence, why am I alive? The question of significance, does my life matter? And the question of intention, what is my purpose? Why am I alive? Does my life matter? And what is my purpose? These are the three most important questions in life. Now, they're not new questions. In fact, the question of existence, why am I alive, was asked by a man in the Bible named Jeremiah thousands of years ago. In Jeremiah chapter 20, he said, why was I born? Was it only to have trouble and sorrow, to end my life in disgrace? Now, obviously, Jeremiah's having a bad day. I'm sure you've had days like that too, when you go, why am I alive? My life is a mess. All I have is problems and difficulties and trials and tribulations. Is this what I'm on earth for? Just to have problems? You know, I heard somebody say one time, I hope life isn't a joke because I just don't get it. And the truth is, a lot of us don't get it. You can try to figure out life on your own, but you really don't have very many options. Now, you can try what I call the mystical approach to finding the purpose of life, and you can find this in a lot of New Age books and seminars. Now, you can certainly find it in TV talk shows. The mystical approach is to define the purpose of life uh, like this. Look within yourself, and you'll find the purpose of your life. Now, you know, that sounds so spiritual, but there's only one problem with the mystical approach. It doesn't work. If I could look within myself, and find my purpose in life. And you could do that too. Everybody would already know their purpose. I've tried that. You probably tried it too. But the answer is not inside you. You can't tell yourself what your purpose is. Now, the second approach that people take is to discover their purpose uh, by what I call the self-help approach. Now, you can go into all kinds of bookstores and find racks and racks of self-help books that talk about discovering your purpose in life. Let me save you a lot of money. They all say the same thing. And they all say this, you've got to invent your purpose. You've got to make it up yourself. It's for you to decide. Not only do they say the same thing, but they all give the same predictable steps. And here they are. Follow your dream, go after your ambitions, aim high, set goals, believe you can achieve, and never, never, never give up. Now, all of those suggestions are good, they're good advice for becoming successful, but you can be a raving success in life and still never know why God put you on earth. You can still never know your true purpose. You know, I know many, many people, they're wonderfully successful in life, in their careers and in all their kind of other areas, but their lives are falling apart. And they haven't the foggiest idea what their purpose in life is. Because the purpose of life is not just acquiring possessions and prestige and power, and pleasure. Oh, no, no, no. Your purpose is far bigger than possessions and prestige and power and pleasure. The purpose of your life is far greater than your own personal fulfillment. It's far greater than your own happiness, or your ambitions, or your goals, or your dreams. Now, those are all good things, but they're not what you're put here on earth for. You can have a lot of success, and you can still feel empty and meaningless on the inside. So the mystical approach doesn't work, and, and neither does the self-help approach. Uh, then you can try what I call the philosophical approach. Dr. Hugh Moorhead, who was a philosophy professor at Northeastern Illinois University, once wrote to 250 of the best-known philosophers and scientists and intellectuals of the 20th century. And he asked them just one question. What is the purpose of life? He then published their answers. They hand wrote them, uh, uh, and he, he, he published their answers in a book. I read that book, and boy, was it depressing. Not one of those 250 philosophers knew the meaning and purpose of life. In fact, most of them admitted that they were just guessing. Many of them said, I'm clueless. I have no idea what the purpose of life is, or if there even is a purpose in life. I don't even know that. In fact, a number of these intellectuals wrote to Dr. Moorhead and said, if you can figure out what the purpose of life is, please tell me. Carl Jung, the famous psychiatrist, wrote back to Dr. Moorhead and he said, I don't know the meaning and purpose of life, but it looks as if something were meant by it 
<laughs> well, now that's really helpful. Thanks a lot, Carl. Uh, you know, Isaac Asimov and Arthur Clarke, the famous science fiction, fiction writers, both said there is no purpose to life. Joseph Heller, who wrote the book Catch-22, said, I have no answers to the meaning of life, and I no longer want to search for any. Now, that's a tragic statement, if you ask me, because a life without purpose isn't worth living. It's no wonder that we've removed God from our culture and that the suicide rate has skyrocketed. Suicide is now the third leading cause of death among teenagers. Why? Because life without purpose is pointless. But here's the good news. You were made for a purpose. And the only other option for discovering your purpose in life is to ask your creator. You were made by God and for God for his purposes. And until you understand that, life's never going to make sense. So why did God make you? Why are you alive? Why are you on this planet? Is there a reason? Is there a purpose to your life? Yes, there is. And the Bible says it in Proverbs 16, verse 4. The Lord has made everything for his purpose. You weren't made for your purpose or for your pleasure, or for your goals and ambition and dreams, God made you for his purpose. If you're alive, and if your heart's beating, and you're breathing, then God has a purpose for your life. God has never made anything without a purpose. In fact, the Bible tells us that God made you for five purposes. And during this next 40 days, in this journey we're going to be on together, we're going to look in detail at these five reasons God put you on this planet. I'm very excited about this, and you ought to be too. These five purpose, purposes are what give your life true meaning. Uh, but today, what I want you to just understand is the motive behind these five purposes. Why did God create you for his purposes? What was his overriding motivation? I want you to write this down. God created me to love me. Write that down. God created me to love me. That's right. God made you to love you. Now, the Bible says this in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. It says, long before God laid down the earth and its foundation, he had us in mind and had settled on us as the focus of his love. Circle the phrase, the focus of his love in your study guide. God says that you were created to be loved by him. He made you to love you. Now notice in that verse it says, long before he laid down the earth's foundations, he had us in mind. Do you realize that before God thought of the universe, he thought of you? Wow. I bet you didn't know that. Before God created the earth, he said, I'm going to create just the right environment for human beings, to create you. That's how much God loves you. He had you in mind before the world began, and he made you for one reason, to show you his extravagant, incredible love. So the answer to the first question of existence, why am I alive, is this. God made me, God created me to love me. Now, the second great question of life is the question of significance. Does my life matter? Does the fact that I'm here on earth make any difference at all? Isaiah, a prophet in the Bible, faced the same question. He said, my work all seems so useless. I've spent my strength for nothing and for no purpose at all. That's Isaiah 49.4. You see, without a purpose, life seems trivial, petty, and pointless. Why? Because you and I were made for meaning. You have to have meaning. You have to have purpose in your life to have hope, and you have to have hope to cope. Now, significance is much more important and much greater than either status or success. Significance is much more than position or possession or pleasure or power or prestige. None of those things are going to last. But true significance is going to last, and it comes from fulfilling God's purpose for your life. Because only God's purpose is going to last forever. In fact, 
Not only will God's purpose for your life last forever, but the purpose for your life started even before you were born. That's amazing. In Isaiah 44, verse 2 in the Bible, God says this, I am your creator, and you are in my care even before you were born. That's Isaiah 44, verse 2. That's how much you matter to God. Not only were you in God's mind, but you were in God's care before you were born. When your mother was still carrying you in her womb, God cared about you. He cared about you because he's the one who planned you. You're not an accident. Let me say it again. You are not an accident. Now, there are accidental parents, but there are no accidental births. There are illegitimate parents, but there are no illegitimate children. There are unplanned pregnancies, but there are no unpurposed people. God even takes human error into account, and God wanted you in this world. If he didn't want you in this world, you wouldn't be alive. In fact, he planned you before he created the world. You are not an accident. The Bible says it like this in Psalm 139, verse 16. You, God, you saw me before I was born. You scheduled each day of my life before I began to breathe. Every day was recorded in your book. Amazing. Every single day. That's how much you matter to God. God is interested in every detail of your life. He has seen it all, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and he recorded it in his book even before you were born. He knew all the dumb decisions you would make. He knew all the dumb decisions other people would make that would hurt you and how you would hurt others. But he saw you, and he loved you, and he still loves you, and he still has a plan and purpose for your life in spite of all the hurt you've gone through. You matter to God. Not only did he know you and love you before you were born, but his purpose for your life will last forever. Psalm 33, 11 says this, his plans, that's God's plans, endure forever. Underline that. His plans endure forever. His purposes last eternally. So if God's purposes are going to last forever, then what am I supposed to do about them right now? And how do they give my life significance? Now, if you don't get anything else I say in this first session, I want you to get this. Life is preparation for eternity. Let me say it again. Life is preparation for eternity. This life is preparation for the next. That is the meaning of life on earth. This life is preparation for the next life. God puts you on earth to prepare you for what you're going to do the rest of eternity with him. His plans and his purposes for you are eternal. They are everlasting. In fact, I want you to write this down. Okay, write this down. I was made to last forever. I was made to last forever. It is no exaggeration to say God has long-range plans for your life. You know, the biggest mistake people think today is uh, this short-term thinking, this here and now thinking, thinking that all that matters is what happens in the 70, 80, or maybe 90 years that you're going to live here on earth. They could not be more wrong. One day, your heart's going to stop beating. That's going to be the end of your body but that's not going to be the end of you. You were made to last forever. In fact, if you were to stretch a line from where you are sitting right now to the moon, uh, uh, your life on earth would represent less than the first millimeter of that line compared to the billions and trillions of years you're going to spend in eternity. Get this. This life is not all there is. This life is just the opening act. It's the dress rehearsal. It's the preschool. It's the kindergarten. It's the warm-up lap around the course before the real race begins. If you live your life as if all that matters is what happens to you here and now, friend, you are making a fatal mistake. God says this, I put you on earth to practice what you're going to do for the rest of eternity. That's how much you matter to God. You were made to last 
forever. Now, the Bible says it like this in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. When this tent we live in, he's referring to our body here on earth. When this tent we live in is torn down, God will have a house in heaven for us to live in, a home that he himself has made, which will last forever. Now, this is the key to understanding significance in your life. When you understand, first, that God made you to love you, and second, that you were made to last forever, that gives meaning to your life, no matter what else happens to you. Now, this leads us to the third important question in life, the question of intention. What is my purpose? You know, maybe God made me to love me, and maybe I'm going to last forever, but so what? What am I here on earth for? What is my purpose here and now? What am I to do with my life before I get into eternity? David asked this question in Psalm 89. He says, why did you create us? For nothing? David is asking the same fundamental question that we ask. What on earth am I here for? That's what we're going to look at in this series together. What on earth am I here for? You know, Bertrand Russell was one of the leading philosophers of the 20th century, and he was also an atheist. But he said this, unless you assume the existence of a God, the question of the meaning and purpose of life is irrelevant. Now, an atheist said that. I mean, even he understood that the only way life can have meaning and purpose is if there is a God who created you for a purpose. If you're here by accident, there is no purpose. If you don't believe in God, then there is no meaning, no purpose to life. That's the logical conclusion. He was right. If there is no God, then you're just a freak, random accident of nature, and your life doesn't have any meaning whatsoever. If there's no God, then there is no right or wrong. There is no good or bad. Meaning and purpose can only exist if there is a moral creator. So you have to go to the creator to know your purpose. And that's what we're going to do. If you want to know the purpose of an invention, you've got to ask the inventor what it is. If you've never seen it, you don't know what it's for. You've got to ask the inventor, the creator of it, or you have to read the owner's manual. Now, that's also true of you, too. You're not going to discover your purpose in life listening to talk shows. You're not going to discover your purpose in life by going to seminars. You're not going to discover your purpose by reading tea leaves or astrology. And you're not going to discover your purpose even by reading philosophers because they're just guessing. The only way to know your purpose is to ask your creator who made you, why did you make me, God? Proverbs 9 verse 10 says this, knowing God results in every other kind of understanding. Now, the more you know God, the more you're going to understand the meaning and purpose of your life. So I want you to write this down. I find my purpose in God. I find my purpose in God. There's no other way to find out why I'm here. Colossians 1.16, I love this in the message paraphrase, says this. For everything, absolutely everything, above and below, visible and invisible, everything got started in him and finds its purpose in him. It all starts with God. And it is all sustained by God. Life is all about God. It's not about you. I'll say it again. You were made by God and for God. And until you understand that, life isn't going to make sense. Now, the Bible says this. It is in Christ that we find out who we are and what we are living for. Part of the overall purpose, he is working out in everything and everyone. If you want to know your purpose, you got to start by getting to know God. So I, I, I want you to remember this phrase this week. It's not about me. It's all about God. Let me say it again. It's not about me. It's all about God. In fact, why don't you just say that with me out loud? Let's say it together, okay? Let's say it. It's not about me. It's all about God. Let's do it again. It's not about me. 
It's all about God. That's right. Now I want you to turn to the person next to you in your group and say, it's not about you. It's all about God. <laughs> Just go ahead and do it. It's not about you. It's all about God. Now, it's going to take the next 40 days for us to fully unpack the answer to the question, what on earth am I here for? Why does it take 40 days? Well, the Bible is very clear that God considers 40 days to be a spiritually significant time period. Many times in the Bible, when God wanted to prepare somebody for his purpose for their life, he took 40 days. For instance, Noah's life was transformed by 40 days of rain. Moses' life was transformed by 40 days on Mount Sinai. David's life was transformed by a 40-day challenge with Goliath. The city of Nineveh was given 40 days to change their ways. Jesus was transformed for ministry by 40 days in the desert. And the disciples were transformed by 40 days with Jesus after the resurrection. Now listen closely. If you live to be 70 years old, you're going to live 25,550 days. Okay? 25,550 days. Don't you think it would be worth just say, 40 of those days to figure out what you're supposed to do with the other 25,510? I think so. So the next 40 days may be the most significant time in your life. In fact, I'm going to tell you, they're going to transform your life. I have no doubt about that. I've seen it happen in literally millions and millions of lives. Now, I realize that we're all at different stages in our spiritual journey. But it's never too late, never too late to become what God wanted you to be. Whether you've been a follower of Jesus Christ for 50 years or you're not even sure what you believe at this point in your life, I'm glad you're here. If your heart is truly open, you are intellectually honest, and you're willing to consider the facts, God will show you his purpose for your life. The Bible says this, it makes no difference who you are or where you're from, if you want God and you're ready to do what he says, the door is open. I want us to close by praying together before into you go into your uh, group discussion time. So let's bow our heads together. And with our heads bowed, I, I want you to know that God had a purpose in bringing you here today to watch this video. He wants you to know him. He wants you to know his purpose for your life. So why don't you begin this journey by talking to him? You don't have to use any fancy words. If you don't know what to say, just follow me as I pray. I'm going to pray, and you can follow me and say, me too, God. Just say something like this in your mind. Dear God, I realize if it weren't for you, I wouldn't even be alive. Because you made me. You must have a purpose for me. I admit that I've been focused on my plans, my goals, my dreams for my life, not yours. But I really want to know your purpose for me. So I commit the next 40 days of my life to learning your purposes for my life. Thank you that you made me to love me. Thank you that you cared about me even before you created the universe and even when I didn't know you. Thank you that you made me to last forever. Thank you for bringing me here today so I could hear this message. I want to live the rest of my life filled with meaning. And I want to start by getting to know you better. So today, I take the first step with you. I open my life, my mind, and my heart completely to you. Teach me what you want to teach me. Help me to get to know you personally. And I pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, have a great discussion time with your group, and I'll see you next time together. It's going to be a great journey. God bless you.